That's good. I love it. What, what a great time to be together. It, it feels a little different for us right here and probably a little different for you. But the cool thing is, if you are watching this live, we are worshiping God together at the same time. What a great thing. I'm so glad to be able to do that. I'm so glad just to be able to join us. I'm glad you're joining us today. And uh, maybe you're watching it a little bit later in the week. That's great. Uh, welcome. Welcome aboard. I'm so glad that you're here. I was thinking about us and how deep in the heart of every person, there is a longing for transcendence. You see this in uh, fairy tales, in, um, in action movies. There, there's, just, there's a longing to go beyond the ordinary. And, and I think that's why we're so enthralled with the British royal family. Like they are just always on our minds. They're always doing something uh, great and, or crazy or unusual. Uh, it seems like their, their lives just transcend the ordinary. They're so well-dressed. They're well-spoken, they're well-off. <laughs> uh, it, it seems like they're always just calm and at peace. And we, we want to know all about them. Uh, they, they just, it seems like so many tabloids are just filled with every little detail of the, the royals. Uh, and, and it would be so cool, it would be like next level, to be able to meet them, maybe snap a selfie with the queen or something. That would be awesome. And I, I don't know about you, but it seems like if we could just meet them, our lives would be more transcendent. We would be, our lives would be transported to another place. Man, if Prince William and Kate would just notice me or notice us, maybe take us in. I heard there's some vacancies in the royal family. Maybe they would just kind of just enfold us in. Oh my goodness, it seems like if that could only happen, our lives would be sheltered from all the crises that are going on in the land. I don't know if that's true or not, but it just, it, it feels like it because they're so transcendent. Today, I want to talk to you about staying connected to God. Staying connected to God, the one who is truly transcendent. If you've got a Bible handy or maybe on your, your smartphone or tablet, you have the U version app, Y-O-U version app. Why don't you get out the Bible and get it in your hands? Psalm 27 verses 4 to 9, and uh, we, we use the NLT. That's the name of the, of the translation that we use. While you're looking for that, I want to set the stage for the psalm we're about to read, Psalm 27. Centuries ago, a young man named David was chosen by God to be the future king of Israel. Now that's really cool and exciting for king, the future king David. Not so great for the current reigning king, King Saul. King Saul, not a happy camper. He was not happy about someone that's not in his family, David, being named as the future king. So Saul and his army kept uh, chasing after David, and he was getting a little uh, following uh, going with him too. And Saul kept trying to, to, to chase him down, hunt him down, attack him. But David and his little uh, band of men kept escaping. Well, you can imagine how it would be to be hunted by your own ruler, your own president, or in this case, your own king. I mean, it's a scary thing, you know? It's, a, it's an oppressive thing. And so David would pour out his heart in songs that he would write to God. We call them psalms. And that's the case with the psalm that we're about to read. David was pouring out his heart to, to God. Sometimes it, within just this one chapter, this one psalm, David like boldly declared, God's got me, God's my castle, where I can hole up and be in safety. Other times in the same psalm, he was totally stressed out. And he was wondering, God, where did you go? I feel abandoned right now when I need you most. Where are you, God? Well, let, let's jump into the psalm. Let's read a little bit now that we know the context. Psalm 27, 4. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. Man, David was just, he just wanted to be at peace in his life. He, he didn't want to have to worry about all the troubles in the world around him. He just wanted to be in his happy place, thinking about the Lord, 
365. That's it. Like if that's his dream. I just want to think about you, Lord. I just want to think about how perfect you are, how beautiful you are. Let's go on. Verse 5. And he's talking about God. He says, for he will conceal me there in his presence, in his house. When troubles come, he will hide me in his sanctuary. And uh, some of you, uh, if you are uh, used to church lingo, you know that word sanctuary. This is the kind of, of, of passage in the Bible that that word comes from. It's a place of shelter and security and safety. And, and he, he, David said, he, God will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. Then I will hold my head high above my enemies. I love that, just that feeling, that, that vibe, uh, that even when he's surrounded by enemies, he'll, he'll hold his head high. At his sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing, and praising the Lord with music. And that's what we've been, what we've been doing today together. Verse 7, hear me as I pray, O Lord. Do you hear all the action words in this prayer that David's praying? Come and talk with me. Um, he, uh, I'm sorry, be merciful and answer me. Verse 8, my heart has heard you say, Lord, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. So as David is, is going through all the situations, all the troubles, all the scary situations of his life, he pours out his heart to God. And he says, God, I just want to be with you. I want to pray to you, meditate on you. I want to worship you. I want to jump for joy in your presence. And even says, God, I, I hear you calling me. And I'm saying, I'm answering back, yes, Lord, I'm coming, I'm coming. David, in the presence of the Lord, feels safe. He feels confident. He worships. He listens. He talks with God. And that's, that's really what prayer is. It's, it's talking with God. Talking a little bit, listening a little bit, talking, listening. That's prayer. And so David's in this place and he's just feeling good about God and, and the safety of his presence and the glory and his, the beauty of the Lord. But then the nightly news comes back up. And he remembers that the world around him is in a dangerous place. People are scared. People are sick and dying. And David starts to feel like he's on his own. His thoughts turn to worry and fear just like us today. Some of our thoughts are, am I going to be safe from this virus? You know, if I touch this doorknob, am I, am I going to get sick and infected? Am I going to hurt other people by carrying germs to someone else? And what, what about my finances? Are, are, am I going to be able to keep my hours at work? Is, is my work going to still keep operating? Am I going to still get paid? Will I be able to pay my rent or my mortgage or, or my school bills or whatever? Uh, uh, for me, I had this experience this past week. Everything has just been so up in the air. Every day we're waiting for the latest news reports. We're, we're checking on the websites, you know, the official websites. What's going on? What are, we, what are we supposed to do? What are we being asked to do? How can we stay safe? And we didn't know what was going to be happening in our office this coming week. I, I guess really we still don't know what's going to be happening in our office this coming week. You know, we have plans and, and backup plans in, in place. But I... I found myself cleaning up my office on uh, this past Thursday, uh, cleaning it up more than usual. Uh, you can't always see the top of my desk. Well, you can see it now. And I grabbed extra notebooks uh, of some, uh, some things I'm working on. I, I grabbed uh, my the books that I might want to read or books for study. I, I went through my, my little library in my office and I just said, Lord, what book should I grab? I, I, I don't know what's coming next. Would you just lead me and guide me right now? And I, I grabbed a couple of books. But as I walked away, I turned off the light and, and I closed the door and I just went, I don't know if I'm coming back. I, I don't know when I'm coming back. I, it, it feels uncertain. I don't know if we're going to just be working remotely for the next week, for the next several months. I, I don't know. And it's such an unsettling feeling. That's how I felt. Then as I was thinking about my, my friends, I've got some friends who just are uh, a couple of friends that are recovering from surgery and I, I can't see them. You know, I can't go and, and lay my hand on their shoulder and, and encourage them and pray for them. And so uh, th this week I, I had to find other ways. So I did some FaceTiming, I did texting, I, I, I did some calling and uh, it's just such a different world. It just feels so weird out there. 
And so like David in, in, in verse 9, I could understand this. I, I pray, do not turn your back on me, Lord. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Don't leave me now. <laughs> Don't abandon me. Oh, God of my salvation. I don't know all the thoughts that are going on in your mind right now. Maybe you have some of the questions I have, or maybe you have some other questions about God and about faith. If God is love, and if God is all-powerful, how can he allow the coronavirus to continue spreading? Where is God when people are suffering? Where is God? And we know people around us are suffering. My wife is going through radiation treatments right now. She's about two thirds of the way done. And honestly, she is suffering. The, the, the treatments are, they, they harm a body. And it's not even just the treatments, but even the, the side effects and the ripple effects of those side effects. With our untrained eyes, we look at what she's going through and we cannot see any good results right now on the surface. You know, we look at her and go, this is not better. This is worse. And, and our eyes, you know, we're not doctors. We, 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 we don't see any good coming out of this. All we see is suffering. How could a doctor allow my wife to suffer? Is that doctor good or is that doctor evil? Is, is her doctor even able to spare her? From, these, from this suffering? Like, does the doctor even have the power to stop these treatments? Well, I can tell you, her doctor is good. And her doctor is strong and wise and knowledgeable. And her doctor could, if she wanted to, stop those treatments right now. Stop that pain. But the doctor sees something that I don't see. The doctor sees something my wife doesn't see. She sees some very good reasons to continue with this treatment, uh, this, this course of treatments, even though it feels harmful to us. It feels dangerous. It feels not good. It feels anything but good. And this is what I know. One day in the future, my wife and I are going to look back and we're going to be so thankful that she's cancer free uh, and living a nice long life that we're going to look back on these days of this, this short several weeks of treatments, and we're going to go, I'm thankful. It really stunk at the time. It was not fun. We couldn't even see any good from it. But looking back, now I, I'm, I, I'm thinking, I can just picture our future selves. We're going to be grateful that she went through this because God did something good through it, and he allowed it for a good purpose. The pain of radiation brought about something good. Timothy Keller wrote, with time and perspective, most of us can see good reasons for at least some of the tragedy and pain that occurs in life. Why couldn't it be possible that from God's vantage point, there are good reasons for all of that? Wow. If we could only see from God's perspective. The, in, in the Bible, the, the book of John tells us that Jesus is God. And Jesus was with God eternally. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Three in one, the Trinity. It's, it is mysterious. It's transcendent. So Jesus is God and he was with God since the beginning. I, I remember the story in, the, in uh, the book of Luke where Jesus had been baptized in water by John the Baptist. Comes out of the water. The Holy Spirit comes on him uh, in, in, uh, uh, in the shape of a dove. And we hear this voice from heaven. It's the voice of Father God. And he says, you are my dearly loved son. And you bring me great joy. Isn't that awesome? You just get this glimpse of love in God. God the Father loves his son and they love each other and they're in unity and uh, they're in oneness. Jesus said in John 10 30, the father and I are one. 
So there's this great love flowing in the Trinity, in God. There's this unity. They speak as one. They work as one. Uh, Paul wrote to the, uh, another place in the Bible, Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 8. Though, he, though Jesus was God, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. He humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Jesus took the punishment for your sins and for my sins. Keller also wrote, Jesus had to pay for our sins, listen to this, so that someday he can end evil and suffering without ending us. So good. Everything about the crucifixion, Jesus hanging on that cross, everything about it was not fair. The author of life, Jesus laid his life down. The, the one truly innocent person died for the sinful. He was punished for all of us sinful humanity. Jesus went through unimaginable physical suffering. He was beaten. He was nailed to a cross. He was suffocating. But his ultimate pain was not physical or fairness. It was feeling abandoned by God the Father. Just picture this, separated for the first time in forever. Not like when, you know, you've been married to someone for 10 years and, you, and you, you're apart for a couple weeks. Not that, no, they were eternally together. And now for those moments on the cross, God the Father let Jesus take the sins of the world on him. And for a moment, Jesus felt the separation from God that sin brings. Jesus felt what you and I felt. He felt that separation. And, and that's why he, he ca called out on the cross, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? That was the worst pain. It wasn't the crown of thorns. It wasn't the nails in his hands. It was that feeling of separation from God. He took on our sin and the separation we feel but he still used relationship language, my God. And when he said, my God, I would have expected him to say my father in this case. Uh, he's going to say my father a little bit later on the cross. But right now he says, my God, my God. He's saying, we are in covenant relationship. I am your Messiah. I'm the chosen one that you have sent. And you are my God. And we are still in relationship even if I can't feel you. And what a great example that is for us. The bottom line of this message is this. Jesus suffered ultimate isolation so that you can stay connected to God. Yeah. I know right now you feel isolated and you feel like, uh, I, you may feel like you, it's the ultimate isolation for you. Normally, as pastors, whenever there's a crisis, the first thing we say is run to the church and get together. Because we need each other and we're better together. And it, this is the first crisis that I've been through where we're not saying that, not physically together. So that's why we're gathering everyone together online because we still do need each other. Yeah. Jesus suffered ultimate isolation so you can stay connected to God. So during this season where the coronavirus outbreak has affected every part of our lives, I challenge you to think about how much Jesus sacrificed for you to connect with you. Yeah. He wants to connect with you. God wants to connect with you. So how can you respond to Jesus' passion to know you? I want to go back and read the words of the psalm that I read earlier. Psalm 27, verses 4 to 9. And as I do, would you listen for the action words? Would you listen to David's heart? Would you listen to what he's going through and see where there's parallels in your life? And maybe you'll even be inspired by what David did. Maybe you will do some of those things in the days and weeks ahead in your life in order to stay connected to God. And that's what I want to challenge you to do. Stay connected to God. Let's read God's word together. The one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most, is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. That's the place where he is. 
for he will conceal me there when troubles come. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on a high rock. And then I will hold my head high above my enemies who surround me. And right now we are all surrounded by an enemy of disease. At his sanctuary, at the Lord's sanctuary, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I'm coming. Maybe, just maybe during this time, God is trying to speak to you. Maybe it's a time when you, you can't go into the office or uh, you, you're a student and you can't go into school because everything's shut down right, right now. Instead of focusing on that, instead of, of uh, worrying about that, instead of only being concerned about that, maybe you could capture this time for good and get connected to God. And if you're already connected to Him, stay connected to God. You have a little more time. And, and now would be a great time to pray, to focus on the Lord, to meditate on Him, to delight in who God is and who He is to you. Right now, God is saying to you, come here, come and talk with me. And this is your opportunity to say, I'm coming, Lord, I hear you. I hear your heart and I'm coming. I'm bringing my heart, I'm bringing myself, I'm bringing all of me to you, Lord. And that really is our happy place. Would you pray with me right where you are? And let's just talk to God together. Lord, we want to very clearly hear your voice calling us, come. Lord, we want to hear you saying that. Lord, I believe that you're saying that to every person, that you are saying, I want you to come and be with me. Lord, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would help us to listen. Help us to hear you. Help us to make space for you. Yeah, help us to quiet the noise in our heads and in our minds and in our hearts and just spend time with you. We want to hear from you, Lord. We want to know you. We want to be with you. We, we want to, to not just know about you. We want to know you. We want to know your heart, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would work in our lives during this craziest of all season, Lord. Lord, I pray that you would meet us online this week as we, as we begin a whole brand new uh, series of, of online Bible studies. Lord, I pray that every person would ha have a home, would have a family, and we could pray for each other and see each other face to face through the screen. Lord, work in our lives. Lord, I pray that we would actually make progress, that we would actually go forward in our relationships with you and with uh, others around us, Lord, during this time. And, and what the enemy meant to separate us and to drag us down, you're gonna turn it around for good. I believe that, Lord God. I'm counting on that and I'm leaning into that. And we as a church are leaning into that too. I, I wonder if you have been a person who has, um, you've been seeking the Lord, you've been um, uh, uh, taking time to uh, visit some churches, maybe you uh, started going to church before you, uh, before, you know, all the, the closures happened and everything, or maybe you have never been in church a day in your life. And you tuned in to this, uh, this broadcast, this live stream, uh, because a friend suggested it or it just happened to come up by chance and you thought you'd check it out. I believe that you're not here uh, by chance. I believe that God has a plan for you. Even if you don't know God yet, He knows you. He knows your name and He cares about you. How do I know that? Jesus showed that, he demonstrated that by coming to earth to be with us and to die for your sins and for my sins. So today, I wanna to invite you to take a spiritual step right, right where you are, right now, uh, no matter where you are, you can talk to God. And I wanna just invite you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Faith is belief trust and commitment to obey. I want to invite you to become Jesus' apprentice. 
Uh, an apprentice is someone who studies uh, a, a pro, who studies uh, you know, a, a master, a master builder, a master artist, or whatever, and learns from that, that pro and starts living their life differently. I want to invite you to be Jesus' apprentice. And uh, how, how, do you, how do you start that? Well, you turn away from your sin. Turn away from all those things that uh, are that bring separation between you and God. That, that that you would turn away from the things you do that harm yourself or others, and turn your life over to God. So turn away from sin, turn your life over to God, and let Him lead, and and begin to be His apprentice. Be be Jesus' apprentice. I'd love to just lead you in a prayer, to coach you in a prayer, and you, you may not know what to say, so uh, let me give you some prompts, just sort of like at a wedding or at an at inauguration. I, I, I'm just going to uh, say a line and ask you to, to pray this. Uh, if you're in a place where uh, you're, you know, you've got your earbuds in and, and you're not supposed to be making noise, you can just pray this silently, just with a whisper or even in your mind. But if you can pray it out loud, I, I encourage you to pray it out loud. And, and uh, everyone who's listening, would you just repeat after me? Pray this prayer. Let's pray it together. So I'm going to say a line or a word, and then you repeat. Let's go. Jesus, I invite you into my life. Please forgive me of my sins and make me new. I choose to follow you starting now and going forward. I'm going to be your apprentice. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, I want to hear from you. So at the end of our broadcast, we're going to tell you a bunch of different ways that, that you can contact us. Would you just let me know, hey, I prayed that prayer with Pastor Garen after the message. And then I'd love to just encourage you and, and help you know what, what your next steps are.